Hey everybody, we need to talk about the Chicago Blackhawks. They are one of the biggest stories in the NHL right now and for all the wrong reasons. They had a ton of hype and lofty expectations surrounding them after the offseason that they had. But so far, it's been a complete disaster of a season. They still haven't won a game, and their fans are starting to get very, very restless. There's been a lot of calls for the coach and GM to be fired. And in this video, we're going to take a look at what exactly is going on in Chicago, some of the numbers and analytics behind why the Hawks have been so bad to start this year. And we're going to talk about whether it's time to hit the panic button if you're a Chicago fan or if it's still a little bit too early to be taking drastic measures. Before we start, this video is brought to you by Symbol. Symbol is the stock market for sports. It allows you to profit off your sports knowledge by trading shares of sports teams just like stocks and also earning a cash payout every time your team wins. Use your sports knowledge on Symbol to buy low, sell high, and earn cash payouts with every win. Join the 7,000 plus other sports fans who have already started to invest in their favorite teams. Visit www.symbol.com, that's S-I-M-B-U-L-L.com to create an account and use the promo code O-T-W-H. And your first deposit up to $100 will be risk-free for 90 days. That means even if you lose money, Symbol will refund your initial deposit within the first 90 days, no questions asked. Join Symbol today and start investing in your favorite teams. Link in the description. All right, it's time to get into it here. Chicago, what is going on with this team? Well, let's look at some uh, some just standard team stats to uh, to get us going here. Chicago's played six games so far. They are still winless, one of the last couple winless teams in the NHL. They are 0-5-1 with a minus 15 goal differential already through six games, a minus 15 goal differential. That is obviously horrible. They are scoring just two goals for per game and giving up four and a half goals against per game, and that's something that jumps out right away. Offense has not been there to start. So some of that is just bad luck, and we'll look at that when we get into some more numbers later on, but the offense hasn't been scoring enough. They're only averaging two goals a game, and you're not going to win a lot of games at the NHL level only scoring two goals, but the biggest problem is on the other side. The defense and goaltending for this team, and there's plenty of blame to go around to for all of it. The defense and goaltending has been horrendous to start this season, and they are giving up four and a half goals against per game, and uh, obviously that is a brutal, brutal number. Um, and, and one of the biggest reasons why this team is in the situation that they're in right now is because of their complete incompetence of keeping the puck out of their own net. And again, there is plenty of blame to go around from the goaltenders to the defensemen to the forwards to the coaching staff. There is plenty of blame to go around as to why that goals against number is so high. Something that really stuck out to me is that their special teams have actually been really good to start this year. Their power play is operating at 27.3%, which is phenomenal. But if their power play is, is that good and they're only scoring two goals for per game, that tells me that their even strength offense has been absolutely terrible and they're completely reliant on the power play to get any sort of goal scoring at all. The other thing, their penalty kill, really, really good as well. 90.9% .9 on the PK. So a team that is giving up four and a half goals against per game is over 90% on the penalty kill. That means their five on five defense, their even strength defense has been absolutely abysmal. And of course, the numbers are there to back that up. That is the case. So you can look at this special these special teams numbers as a positive if you want if you're a glass half full type of person then 
at least they're doing something well and they're doing something right. And if they can continue to play this well on special teams, it's going to lead to some wins at some point. And it's very rare that you see teams that are good on special teams not be good overall. Generally, the best teams in the league also have the best special teams, and if you're good on special teams, you're usually a pretty good team and vice versa. So, you know, there is hope. You know, maybe if they can get the five-on-five game figured out, Chicago will actually be a pretty darn good team because they have the special teams to do it. If you're a glass-half-empty person, and the other side of that coin is that they have these elite special teams units, both power play and penalty kill, and the team still has not won a game. Still has not won a game. That means they must be absolutely horrible, even strength, and that's been the case so far. They've been absolutely horrible, even strength, because it's not special teams that's hurting this team at all. Now we're going to take a little bit of a deeper look in here to some uh, more analytical type numbers. And we're going to start with shooting percentage. This is what I uh, alluded to um, with them only having two scoring two goals per game being a little bit of bad luck involved. Their team wide shooting percentage so far this year is 6.5%. The league average is 9.6%. So they are about 3% lower than the league average in shooting percentage, which means their finishing has not been there. Now, some of that luck definitely plays a role in that. Um, Whether it's a puck hitting the post, whether it's a goaltender making a, you know, save that they're only going to make one one or two out of ten times, just an elite save of the day type save against them. For There's definitely luck that factors into a shooting percentage getting this low. Their finishing also hasn't been great, and I bet you, I haven't done this, but I bet you if you went through uh, each of their players' individual you know, analytics and looked at finishing percentile, I bet you there'd be a lot of Blackhawks players who are pretty low uh, on the finishing scale as far as this season goes. And I think that that certainly plays a role in their shooting percentage being this low as well. But they are not scoring nearly as many goals as they could be or that they're getting the chance to score and they're just they're not complete they're not finishing off the plays they're not finishing off the shots with the puck in the net so that's a big reason as to why their offensive output hasn't quite been good enough and why I think it could get better if they can get that shooting percentage up more and start finishing off these goals that they're expected to score then Chicago is going to start scoring more goals, and that's going to give them a better chance to win games. Their save percentage, their team save percentage this year, now this goes right along with the awful goals against, 852. Between Marc-Andre Fleury and Kevin Lankin and their team save percentage is 852 this year. The league average in save percentage is 904. I mean, they are significantly below league average in save percentage. Some of that is certainly on the goaltenders. Some of that is certainly on the defense. Some of that is certainly on the coaching staff. Like It's just everything defensively for this team, except for the penalty kill somehow, has been an absolute disaster so far for the Blackhawks. And now we're going to look at some even strength numbers because obviously the special teams numbers are good. Let's take a look at even strength here. Five versus five expected goals for 9.2. The league average is 10.4. So they are below average in expected goals for. Basically what that means is that they are not getting as many or as high quality chances as the average teams around the league do. So they're below average in expected goals for. Um, And then when we go down and look at their actual goals for, it's only five. They only have five five on five goals this season. So Not only is their expected goals for a little bit over one less than the league average, their actual goals for is four less goals than what they were expected to score. So it's just a real downward trend offensively there for this team. And then goals against, it's a downward trend for that as well, as their expected goals against 5-on-5 this year, 
13.1, the league average 10.4, so they're giving their expected goals against are about three goals more than the league average, so they're playing below average defense and giving up high quality chances against, and then their actual goals against five on five is 22, so they've given up nine more goals uh, five on five than that than they were expected to give up that's a knock on their goaltending right there their goaltending is not getting the job done in that aspect um you know and again everything headed in the wrong direction for the chicago blackhawks with these numbers now i want to take a look at some individual players because this team added some big pieces in the offseason and then also have, you know, their stars that were there already. So I just picked some out here of guys that I think are important pieces of this team. And of course, we are going to start in goal with Marc-Andre Fleury. Um, you know, they traded for him in the offseason. He was the reigning Vesna Trophy winner. He was supposed to come in and significantly upgrade Chicago's goaltending. He has started four games for the Blackhawks this year. He has an 0-4-0 record with a 5.75 goals against average and an 8.39 save percentage. Now, obviously, it's only been four games. It's a small sample size, but 8.39 save percentage. And his... Uh, goals saved above average is negative 7.9. So GSAA or goals saved above average is the goals that this goalie prevented given his save percentage and shots faced versus the league average save percentage on the same number of shots. So his I mean, he's not saving any goals. Like, he is not going above and beyond to to save expected goals against and actually making the saves on those shots. He's actually giving up bad goals. He is giving up goals that he should be making the save on. And he has a negative number, a heavy negative number in goals saved above average. He has been well below league average to start this season in goal. And to put this a little bit into perspective... Marc-Andre Fleury's uh, goals saved above average last season with Vegas when he won the Vesna Trophy was 20.1. It was 20.1 last season. It's negative 7.9 this season. Talk about a massive shift in the wrong direction. Seth Jones, their other, you know, massive acquisition this offseason in the trade with Columbus, who they also decided for some reason was worth nine and a half million dollars a year, which that contract extension hasn't even kicked in yet, has been pretty bad this season uh, to start. Six games played, he has no goals, four assists for four points, a minus nine rating. And his expected goals for is 4.7. His expected goals against 5.7. So again, the Blackhawks are giving up better chances than they're getting when he's on the ice. And they're giving up more goals than they're getting when he is on the ice. So the Blackhawks are a worse team with Seth Jones on the ice. Now, he's far from the only one. It's actually been just about everybody. I mean, nobody has really been good for Chicago this season. Jake McCabe, their free agent acquisition to, again, add to that defense core and try and, you know, help this team defensively. Six games played, zero goals, one assist, one point, a minus five rating, an expected goals four of three, and an expected goals against of 3.7. So again, he's expected to be to give up more goals than he's getting when or the team's getting when he's on the ice. Jonathan Taves returning after missing all of last season with illness. Uh, the captain of the team, supposed to be, you know, this elite two-way forward. Six games played, zero goals, two assists, two points, a minus six rating, an expected goals four of 1.9, and an expected goals against of 2.2. Again, the expected goals against is higher than the expected goals for. Patrick Kane, now he didn't play in their last game because he's in COVID protocol, but he has played five games this season. One goal, four assists, five points in five games. Okay, great. Patrick Kane is a point-per-game player. 
Yay, that's great, right? Minus seven. Horrendous defensively. Expected goals for 2.7. Expected goals against 4.1. Patrick Kane is a bad defensive player. Now, when you put good defensive players around that, you can hide a fact that a winger is not a great defensive player. And that's very easy to hide, actually, with good other defensive players on the ice. And at the end of the day, wingers don't play uh, that big of a role in the defensive side of things, other than, you know, a lot of times their most important role defensively is just getting the puck out of the zone. Um, Chicago's not hiding the fact that Patrick Kane is terrible be- defensively because a lot of their other players have been just as bad defensively. But Kane's been really bad. Alex Debrinket, another guy that is, you know, a big, big player on this team. Six games played, two goals, one assist for three points, minus nine. Expected goals for 2.8. Expected goals against 4.3. He's also been terrible defensively. And they play on the same line. Debrinket and Kane play on the same line. You're, I mean, defensively, you're basically playing with two less players on the ice when it comes to the defensive zone when Debrinket and Kane are out there. I mean, just absolutely abysmal defense from those two. And uh, obviously, that's not helping this team in their big problem of giving up way too many goals. But those were just some players that I wanted to point out here and look at some of these numbers because these are the big guns for Chicago, the guys that are supposed to be leading the way. And they've all been bad to start this season. One last thing I want to touch on here is the coach, Jeremy Colleton. Um... God, I don't even know where to begin. There's a there's a good reason why uh, everybody is calling for Jeremy Colleton to be fired. And Stan Bowman as well is getting a ton of pressure right now from the fan base in Chicago. But Jeremy Colleton, uh, just, I, he, he should be fired. Absolutely should be fired. This guy just, it doesn't seem to be respected. Seems like a complete pushover and uh, is not getting nearly enough out of this team and, and doesn't seem to be pulling anything out of this team. Like, he isn't motivating this team. And I there, there was a lot made last night, and, and this was a big thing on Twitter, when they called a timeout down by three goals in the third period against Detroit, and Jeremy Colleton, the head coach of the team, took a blank whiteboard and gave it to the players with nothing on it, and basically said, coach yourselves, come up with something yourselves. That right there, he should have been fired for that as soon as that game was over. That, he's he's not even the coach anymore at this point. Like, he's not even coaching. He literally handed a blank whiteboard to the players during a timeout and said, hypothetic, or basically said without actually saying it, coach yourselves. Do it yourself, I'm out. He should have been fired for that as soon as the game was over. He's not coaching this team. And they're get he they're he's not getting anything out of them. And they're not listening to him. They're just pushing him over. There's no accountability. There's no responsibility with this team. Colleton absolutely needs to be gone. Bowman needs to be gone too. And I don't think Bowman has has the you know what to fire Colleton because Colleton's one of his boys. And that's been one of the biggest problems with Stan Bowman is that whether it's players or coaches or if you're one of Stan's boys, he's not gonna he's not gonna fire you. He's not gonna put you on the chopping block. Bowman needs to go as well. This team needs a whole new change in direction. And what I really think this team needs is a veteran coach that is going to come in, demand respect. Respect that Jeremy Colleton has not demanded. Demand respect right away and hold players accountable. And tell them if you're not going to play the right way, if you're not going to bring an effort every single night, if you're not going to do what the coaching staff staff expects of you, you're going to sit on the bench and you're going to be healthy scratch and you're not going to play. This team, if they're going to turn it around, needs a veteran, well-respected coach I'd really like to see a former Stanley Cup winner go in there 
and just grab, figuratively grab this team by the throat and say, you're going to get it together right now, and we're going to be giving 100% effort on the ice each and every shift, or you're not going to play. And it's going to take a strong, strong, respected coach to do that, but I think that's what Chicago needs right now. Jeremy Colleton ain't it. He ain't it. I can tell you that. This guy's a complete pushover and is not respected by the players. And they just walk all over him and he doesn't he doesn't push back. He doesn't command any respect in return. They, he just lets them walk all over him. So he's got to go. Bowman's got to go. This team is in trouble. It's it's a little early to be saying panic. It's a little early to be saying panic. We're not even 10 games in yet. But if this team is going to turn their season around, it needs to start right now. Because it's not just going to be an easy turnaround. We look at we look at all these numbers. Their top players are not playing like top players. Their goaltending's been horrific. Their team defense overall has been horrific. Again, I think the offense is there's been a little bit of bad luck involved in the offense there. Um you know, they are creating chances. They're just not finishing. Their finishing will probably end up closer to average over the course of a bigger sample size and over the course of the season. I think this team's going to find a way to score goals. The most worrisome thing for me is the fact that they can't keep the puck out of their net. And there's really no easy fix for that until either you start playing a whole new defensive system or the players start playing the way that they need to be defensively. And so far, we haven't seen that at all from Chicago. So uh, there's a lot to be worried about here. Uh, and it's a, it's too early, like I said, to be thinking that the season's a complete lost cause yet. But Chicago's dug themselves into a deep hole here. And they need to get it turned around very, very quickly or they're not going to at all. And I think it starts by bringing in a new coach and somebody who's going to be a lot more respected and demand a lot more accountability from everyone in that locker room than what Jeremy Colleton is right now. So I think that's where it starts. I don't like Chicago's chances of really turning this around, not significantly, um, and not quick enough to make the playoffs. Uh, looking now, I don't think Chicago is likely to be a playoff team. Um, and and I don't like a lot of the things that I've seen from them so far. So it's going to take it's going to take real big changes to get this team on the right track, whether that's personnel changes, coaching changes or just the guys that they do have starting to play the way that they should be. But that generally doesn't just happen. Like you don't just go from being the worst team, one of the worst teams in the league. Arizona is probably the worst, but one of the worst teams to being one of the best, just like that. It's not how it works. So lots to worry about here with Chicago. And um, we'll have to see what kind of changes they do make, how the rest of the season does go, or does go, or especially how these next two weeks go. These next two weeks are absolutely huge for this team. Uh, and if, if it continues like this, w within two weeks, the panic button will be hit and their season will be pretty much over most likely. So, um, yeah, it's it's not been the start that the Chicago Blackhawks were expecting, to say the least. And um, I think there's going to need to be some major changes made if they are going to attempt to turn some things around here. But the numbers do not look good, particularly on the defensive side of things here to start the year. But... With that, like, comment, share, subscribe, follow on social media. All those links are down in the description. If you'd like to further support the channel, the links to our Patreon merchandise store, donation link, and channel memberships are down in the description as well. Keep spreading the word about this channel. Let's keep this thing growing. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll talk to you guys soon.